How do we understand all these different um, people groups? Well, to do that, we've got to have a little basic course in genetics. Now, you might say, I've never studied genetics. Hey, if you're married and have kids, you study genetics. So we're going to do a little basic course in genetics. Now, here's something else I want you to understand. I'm going to give you the big picture basic principles. You don't have to be a PhD in genetics to be able to understand this. Now, if you've got a PhD in genetics, you'll know it's much more complex than this. But nonetheless, these are the basic principles. We have a PhD in molecular genetics on staff, Dr. Georgia Purdom. She uses the same diagrams I use to explain the big picture. Because when you get the big picture, then you can grasp hold of what's going on, even if you're not a scientist or uh, have studied genetics. And so to do that, we're going to start with Genesis 1, where it says that God made land animals according to their kind. In fact, 10 times we read that phrase, according to their kind or after their kind in Genesis chapter 1. And so we need to ask ourselves, what does that mean, according to their kind? It seems that each kind remains its own kind. And then we meet the word kind again in the English, translated from the Hebrew, in Genesis 6, when it's talking about two of each kind, seven pairs of some, but two of each kind of a land animal went on board the ark. So we need to understand this word kind, and it's going to help us. One of the questions people ask is, how could Noah get all the animals on the ark? When Bill Nye was on this stage debating me, one of the things he said was, he mocked me for believing in Noah's ark, Noah couldn't fit the millions of species on the ark. The Bible doesn't say species went on the ark. It uses a Hebrew word. In fact, the Hebrew word it uses is the word mean. And we translate the word mean as the word kind. One of the problems we've got is that in the Latin Vulgate, they use the word species. But the word species used to mean what we would say the word kind means. But basically, the word species has been redefined. And so it becomes more complicated, but this is the way to basically understand it. We have a classification system today. It's an arbitrary system. Man has invented kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Now, what we would say is that the Hebrew word mean, translated kind, really in understanding how they define our modern classification system is more at the family level of classification, not genus, not species. In most instances, it's at the family level. And let me explain to you how we came up with that. In fact, at, on the ark, on the first deck, when you get down to the bow end of the first deck, you'll see this cutaway model. And on the wall, you'll see this big sign. And it's good to have a look at that because our scientists worked for years doing research to determine how many kinds Noah would need on the ark. Actually, they've got their 1,400 animal kinds. We've actually overestimated. We think the number of kinds was less than 1,000. But I'll, I'll share with you how they got that figure. If you take dogs, there's been a lot of work done on dogs. You've got lots of different species, 34 species of dogs. Dingoes, wolves, coyotes, jackal, fennet, foxes, domestic breeds, and so on. Well, what they've looked at is all the documented evidence that, oh, this species has bred with this one, this one with this one, this one with this one. This one never bred directly with that one, but it did breed with that one. They bred with this one that bred with that one. You get the idea? You can show they're all interconnected, so they're all one kind, because you can show that connection. Now, when it comes to bats, we have a display down there at the Ark on the first deck with some bats in there. And when it comes to bats, nobody's ever shown the different species of bats into breeding, so we let them be separate kinds, but we suspect there's only one kind of bat. It's called bat. That's what we suspect, right? But we allow different kinds just because we don't have the documented evidence. And then in the fossil record, there are creatures that, um, that we allow to be different kinds cause no, because the, they look different, but they look similar. But, you know, you imagine if you found a chihuahua and a, um, a Great Dane in the fossil record, you'd, you'd be hard-pressed if you didn't see them alive to think that they were the same kind, right? Well, there are creatures in the fossil record. The problem is you can't see them into breed because they're dead. Just one to... Most of you didn't get that, but <laughs> fossils are dead. They're not alive. They can't. Br you, you understand that, right? But, man, I had to start at a different level here for this group. <laughs> okay, so so we allow a number of different kinds when there's probably far fewer kinds. That's why we think it's less than a thousand. So 
when you look at our classification system, we have the dog kind, Canidae, and that's the family level, different genera, different species, but we would say there's one kind of dog. And the same with cats, Felidae, uh, we'd say that's the family, so that's probably the kind. So that means you'd only need two of the dog family and two of the dog, two of the cat family on the ark. So there are 34 different species of dogs. You've got all these different species of dogs. And here's what the secular world says. Based on genetic, morphological, and behavioral data, it's clear that the domestic dog originates from the wolf. Now, it's interesting that the wolf and the domestic dog are the same species, but they say something like this actually over time gave rise to these, including these, which is sort of hard to understand, right? And see, when you see changes like this, Evolutionists use these sort of changes as, oh, it's part of, the, part of evolution. But actually, when you see these changes, that's the opposite of evolution. When you look at what's happening with the dog kind, and you get different species, and then your domestic uh, species there, what's happening overall is a loss of information till you get to the stage where you don't have a lot of information left. I mean, a poodle is sort of the end of the line in dogs, okay? <laughs> If it lost any more information, it'd be gone. I mean, that's the end. Okay. Now, we don't know how many dogs God made originally. Let's say he made two dogs, and they got married and had kids, and they got married and had kids, and they got married and had kids, and then we end up with a typical homeschool family of dogs. Okay, so, now, how do we get the different species, all right? How do we get those? Well, in genetics, we have a convention, big A, big B, big C, dominant genes, little a, little b, little c, recessive genes, remember this? And it's much more complex than this, but this is the basic principle. So here's a male and female dog, and they have a mixture of genes. And so sexual reproduction, one set of genes from the parent, uh, each parent, and you get a combination. Notice that combination there is different to the parents, so it's going to look different to the parents. It's actually got less information than the parents, no longer has little a's, little b's, or little c's, so it's actually lost genetic diversity, all right? But it's going to be a dog. If those two are dogs, it's going to be a dog, right? You look different to your parents because you're a unique combination of information, and by the way, that unique combination is right there at fertilization, which means it's not a part of the mother's body, it's a unique combination. So it's an individual made in God's image, which means abortion is killing a human being. Remember that. So, these are the other uh, combinations that you can get. I like to use this one here to represent our purebred, what we call purebred dogs, like poodles, okay? Because how do we get purebred dogs? When we say pure, they're not pure in the sense of perfect, the opposite of that pure in the sense of we've eliminated genetic variability. It's called artificial selection. We say, oh, here's a dog with a short nose, a dog with a short nose, let's breathe them together and eliminate all the genes for long noses. You get the idea? By the way, because we do that, what happens is you're concentrating the mutations that have added up over time because of sin. So if you have one of those purebred dogs, you know, Maltese or uh, Bichon or Poodle or Chihuahua, you know it costs you millions of dollars to keep them alive, right? This breed has eye problems, this one has arthritis problems, this one has breathing problems, isn't that right? I mean, you look at the bulldog, those poor things have got their jaw stuffed up into their face, their nose stuffed into their head, and they can hardly breathe, uh, and we say, what a beautiful little dog. So, see, here, here's a problem we've got, though. I want you to think about this. In a lot of our Sunday school literature and children's books, you know what it says to our kids? Look at these beautiful animals God made. You know, look, look at the poodle. God made the poodle. Uh, think about it. When God made everything, he said it was very good. You can't call a poodle very good. <laughs> do, you, do you know the correct definition of a poodle, a chihuahua, a bulldog? you know the correct definition of them? Sin-cursed, degenerate, mutated copies of the original dog that God made. That's what they are. So when you look at your little, little dog, you can say, come here, little degenerate mutant, come here. Because so, that's what they really are. Okay? Now, you, you, you think about it. If you've got one of them, you know that you've got to pay a lot of money to keep them alive. That's what keeps the vets in business. If you've got one of those mongrel dogs in, as a mixture of everything in the neighborhood, you can run over them with a truck and they'll get up and wave <laughs> and off they go. So, now, and, and by the way, here's the problem. We tell kids, look at these animals God made, then they go to public school, which the majority of them do, 
and they're told, do you realize God didn't make them because they have changed? And, and, and these species have come into existence over time and, and your dogs were bred in the last few hundred years, which means God didn't make them and evolution's true and then they get indoctrinated and brainwashed.